You know, Keir Starmer is, he's not just particularly uncharacteristic. He is someone with no personality and no policies. Mm. I mean, that's the, because I think we can get into sort of a dodgy ground when we suggest that the only thing voters go for is, is, you know, the dramatics of a performance. Mm. And I think a lot of people mistakenly think that that's why people vote for Boris Johnson, ignoring the Brexit stuff and everything else that was going on in 2019. But even if Keir Starmer was a showman, the Labour Party's policies have veered from trying to ride on the back of the Corbyn wave to then now successively kind of moving away from anything that smells vaguely left wing mm. to, um, you know, p basically riding the last two years on saying, I'm not anti-Corbyn, I, I am anti-Corbyn and I'm, you know, and get that kind of um, that label away from us. And he's successfully done that. But then at a time when we were crying out for an opposition throughout the pandemic, and I really think too many uh, apologies and excuses are made for Keir Starmer and the Labour Party, um, he studiously decided to basically follow in the footsteps of Boris Johnson. But I think the broader picture is even if Starmer goes, and it would be wildly ridiculous for him to go over a PCN. I mean, that really is <laughs> a pathetic end to a pathetic politician, I think. But um, but the question is, what's the future of the Labour Party? What does it stand for? I mean, nobody knows what it stands for. It doesn't have an ideology anymore. Is it kind of a new reheated Blairism or is it something sort of centre middle? Mm -hmm. It's it's sort of blamange. Uh, it certainly isn't a party for the working class that it used to claim to be. Mm -hmm. And so I think that for me, the always the best thing would be that we need an opposition, but it needs to be something away from the zombie party of the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. well, we'll